right? Biblically, that is known as the upper room when it talks about Jesus went to the disciples and he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. That is talking about you breathing, doing the inhaling, exhaling, illuminating the 12 pair of cranial nerves, the disciples, all right? And the Jesus Christ force is talking about the Kundalini when it hits the pineal gland and awaken, all right? That is what that is talking about. So that is what that is symbolic to. And you're storing the energy into the dantians, right? In particular, in the upper dantian, which once again is called the upper room, all right? Now, um, let's go over the three exercises in which that Master Sanyata, Grandmaster Master Sanyata um, taught us, in which that was the beginning stages of our Tai Chi. We begin with the Qigongs. It's called Tibetan White Crane Qigong. Tibetan White Crane Qigong. All right? There's three particular exercises I'm going to demonstrate here. There's more, but these are the main three that we focus on. All right? Now, you have to look at my feet. Can y'all see them? Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to scoop and gather earth energy, bring it up, and my hands is going to rotate. As you see, it's like a beak. That's the crane. That's the crane. So, I will scoop energy and turn my hands like this into the crane. But look at my feet. I would step out. And begin rocking back and forth. Heel toe. Heel toe. What this is doing is activating and opening what is called the bubbling spring, which is your soul chakra. So that you can absorb energy from the ground. All right? That's what this would do. Make you absorb energy from the ground. With your soul chakras activated. All right? You're going to add in. Now you're going to add in the actual movements. So just think about your feet going heel, toe, heel, toe. All right? Heel, toe, heel, toe. Got it? Now. The first one we're going to do is called the chi ball. Turn to the side. Scoop energy, as I showed you, into the crane beak. Your right foot goes out, and you begin to rock. And your hands come down. And this is what you do. You're rotating your arms into the shape of a ball as you rock back and forth. You begin to start feeling the ball actually form as you rotate in your hands. As your hands come up, inhale. And as your hands come down, exhale. If you need to, slow it down. Breathe in, breathe out. You do nine of these, or six, nine, twelve, however you want to do it. All right, reverse, 
Now, come forward. As your hands go out, exhale, as they come in, inhale. And make sure that your arms are going in a circular motion like a ball. And you will feel the cheek ball forming along your arms and your hands and fingertips. Okay, take your right foot and bring it back in alignment with your left foot. Hands go up, come down, as if you scrape the negative energy off. As you say, one for the universe, one for humanity, and one for yourself. And to be in the residence of the energy back to Mother Earth. All right? So, now what you want to do is reverse. Now you want to step out on the left foot after you pick up the chi energy and do the exact same thing that you just did on the right side. All right, reverse. You see, you see my hands, that's how my hands are going.
Okay, now take your right foot and bring it back up towards the left foot. And once again, Okay. Are your hands on? Are your hands on? Yup, mine is. That's good. You feel the tingling? Yes, I just thought to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my hands are warm. Yes, that is the energy. You can feel with, it your heart too. Yes, with that energy, you can heal yourself or others. It's like static key? Yes. Okay. Yes, the static tingling sensation, that is chi energy. Yep, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's for me. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. That's for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, with your hands over the chest, what that does is activate your lung, your lung meridian, your upper respiratory area, as well as also helps with the thymus gland, which is your immune system or defense system, as well as also your heart. All right, yep, you go back to the navel and put the hand over the navel chakra. Once again, for the men, normally it's the left hand over top of the right. For the women, it's the right hand over top of the left. Okay. The next exercise is known as the law, the will of law. And you do the exact same thing as we did the first time, which was to scoop the energy, come into the crane beak, and then hands just come down. And you start rocking back and forth, but the hands and waist turns to the side, into a circle. All right, so let me show you. The only thing turning is your weight. As your hands come back, you breathe in. And as your hands come forward, you breathe out. You can unmute yourself if you have any questions. I just had to do that because of the noise. You can do six of these. In reverse.
We can turn our hands over to receive the energy. Reverse. Take your right foot and bring it back to your left. What this does is clear your auric field of any negative energy and send the residue of the energy back into Mother Earth. She enjoys that. Right now, let's reverse, scoop energy. Now we step out on the left foot and do the same thing. What this does is open your belt meridian, call your hara, within the Oriental or Taoist teachings, it's called your hara, H-A-R-A, your hara, which is your belt meridian near your navel chakra. This is what this exercise does. Very important meridian, as it helps to Center and balance you. Gravitation. All right, reverse. These exercises strengthens your ability in order to heal yourself as well as others. You remove blockages from your various meridians. All right, we're going to turn our hands over, receive energy.
Ray reverse. Okay, our right foot comes back to the left foot. We go to clearing. As your arms come up, breathe in. And they come down, breathe out. Okay, the last one is the same, except this is called the heart massage. It's called the heart massage. All right? You scoop energy, come up to the cr crane beak, step out, the right foot, left hand goes over the heart, and your right hand comes up, you look at the center of it, and it comes down. As your hand comes up, you breathe it in. As your hand comes down towards the back, you breathe it out. Front up. You breathe in. Back out. You breathe out. It strengthens the heart. And the ability in order to store energy into the heart. Chakra. As your hand comes up, you want to be able to look at the center of your palm to activate it just simply by the look and come down. All right, reverse. Now it's look like you're throwing a baseball. Right, right foot comes back in alignment with the left. 
See? Notice how your hands come down the front of the body along all the chakra points from that top of the head, the throat, the chest, the abdomen, down to the genitalia. Clearing out your seven chakras. All right. Now we do the other side. Reverse. Heart murmurs, heart angina, heart palpitations, panic attacks, all these things are eliminated by performing this particular exercise. Even heart congestion. And bring the right foot in alignment with the left and clear. Okay. Y'all gonna take a seat. How do everybody feel? You did. Okay. They judge. I do everybody. I feel I feel awesome. I feel good. I broke a sweat though. I see you glowing. Yeah, you glowing. Okay. I see that. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, that's okay then. Okay. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's what's supposed to happen because what it's doing is releasing toxins at the same time, bringing more energy into you. Okay. That's what's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. So eliminate toxins as well as also bring energy into your navel chakra by doing the will of law, the heart massage by bringing it into the heart chakra, the, um, what they call the chi ball by bringing it into the third eye. All right, so those are the three areas that you store energy. So those three exercises particularly store and put the energy into those particular areas. So by doing so, it releases those toxins. So yes, you'll sometimes you'll shake, tremble, you'll you'll sweat, 
You'll feel the tingling sensations, the heating up, all of that. All of that. Okay? All right, are there any questions concerning anything so far that we've gone over? Okay. Now, let me put on... Let me put on the information here. Da -da. Can everybody see the slide? Yes. All right. Now what we're going to do is call the microcosmic orbit. All right? The microcosmic orbit. With this technique, what happens is, is that we're going to store the energy of what is called the Qigong, the navel spleen area. You see that? That's what we're going to store the energy at, the Qigong. All right? at the navel spleen area, which is right at the navel. That's where we're going to store the energy. So your focus is going to be at your navel, all right? For the men, we're going to draw the energy down from the navel down to the perineal, which is called the hu yin. The perineum is called the hu yin, which is the gate of, dark, of death and life, right? That's what that is. All right? Men has a, um, the perineum for men is actually the closure of the vaginal area, which the remnants is what is called the G spot uh, for the women. But for the men, it's called the million dollar spot, which is right between the scrotum sac and the anus area. There's an indenture. You can actually take your finger and put your finger there is like an indenture, but that one time was the opening in which that was the vaginal canal um, for the first six weeks inside the womb until the mother started um, producing the testosterone or for the babies developed to transform from a female into a male. All right? But all men have the remnants of that, um, which is called the million dollar spot. The woman has the G spot, the man has the million dollar spot, as they would say. But we would draw the energy down from the navel, down to the perineum as we breathe in, up the spinal column, to the top of the head, to the um, pay you, all right? The pay you, which is the crown, down to the nose, and then as it gets to the nose, you're going to breathe out through the nose, down the front channel, back to the navel, back down to the feet as you breathe out. As you breathe in again, up the back, the spinal column, to the top of the head, to the pi U, which is at the top of the head, and then breathe out from the top down, back to the perineal. All right? Now for the women, Y'all would gather the energy in the same location, which is in the Qigong um, area, which is the navel spleen area. But instead of bringing it down and up, you're going to bring it up the front channel to the top of the head. And then as you breathe out, it's going to fall down the spinal column to the G-spot area of perineal. All right. And then as you inhale, you're going to bring the energy back up, the navel, the heart, the third eye to the top of the head. And then as you breathe out, it's going to fall back down the back, back to the perineum. All right? So the woman is just the opposite of the man. Man taught Chia, what he did was he did not inform the women that that was the process for them. He had the women doing the exact same exercise as the men. Now, unless a woman is a butch, you can instantly feel that that's not right for her. 
Okay? She can instantly feel that that's not right for her. All right? But they was going along with it, and <clears throat> Man Shatia, um, Chia did not tell them. Master Sanyata told us that Man Chia was teaching it wrong purposely because he was trying to suppress the woman. Instead of the woman being feminine and being um, Mother Nature, as they would say, the Mother Goddess principle. So, Master Sanyata told us that that was the correct way for the women to do it. It's the way I just taught you. But as you see here, the tongue touches the roof of the palate to complete the circuit of the governing and the conception channels. All right? By your tongue touching the roof of the mouth behind the two front teeth and pulling up your heel yin, which is the perineum, it keeps energy from leaking out the body and keeps it in a circular motion. All right? Keeps it in a circular motion, a connected circular motion, in which that is called a raw boreas, which is the serpent biting its tail in mythology. So when you see the serpent biting its tail, you know, it's a beautiful picture, or, or you might get intrigued with it if you went through the Theosophical Society, but they're not teaching you that is nothing more than a microcosmic orbit technique. That's what that is. Right? So that's what the symbolism was. If the serpent biting its tail is talking about the connection of the governing vessel and the conceptional vessel or functional vessel or channel. Those two must connect to create the one. All right? That one energy source flowing through the body. So, once again, we're going to, if you need some help, you can take your hands and place them at your navel. Once again, left hand with the right hand for the men. For the woman, right hand over top of the left hand for the woman. All right? You can sit straight with your back tilted or arched back so that there's no curvature in the spine as much as possible. Pull up your anal perineal muscles. Make sure your tongue behind your two upper teeth or your upper, the upper palate behind your two front teeth. You're going to visualize the energy where your hands are at the navel. And as you breathe in, for well, the woman is going to move up the front middle portion like this. So as you breathe in from the navel, as we get here at the top of the head, you let it fall. Exhale. Down the spinal column, back to the perineum. And then breathe in again and bring it back up. And we're going to do nine cycles. And then back down to the perineum. For the man, just the opposite. You're going to breathe in. Generate the energy in the lower dantian. And then move it down to the perineum. And then breathe up the back, middle portion of the spine, the top of the head, to the pi U, and then exhale. Back to the perineum again. Make sure every time that you exhale, you re pull up your perineum in order to send the energy back up to the top of the head again. And then as you release, you can relax the perineum, exhale, and the energy falls back down to the perineum. Pull up your perineum again, inhale, and continue circling. Same thing for the woman. What we're going to do now is take your hands, place them at the navel, Pull up your perineum. Make sure your tongue is behind your upper teeth. 
Now put palate behind your two front teeth. And you're going to breathe in and bring the energy down into the lower dantian, down into the navel. If you need to, visualize a sun. Visualize that you are bringing the sun down into your navel. We're going to do nine breaths. Let's begin. Every time you exhale, visualize that sun getting brighter in that area. Let's begin. Okay, now that you've gathered the energy there, you want to now move the energy in the directions in which that we just pre previously spoken about. You can make nine cycles. Let's begin.
Okay, after you finish, keep your hands over your navel chakra. All right, what you want to do now, being that you collected the energy, you want to be able to circulate the energy and store it. So you want to do your hands 36 times to the left, 36, well, 36 times to what we call clockwise, 36 times or 24 times to um, counterclockwise. All right. Okay. What did y'all feel on that one? Did y'all feel the energy in the lower day? Yes. Good. Like you just been taught how to condense energy. You took it from a free form, you collected it within your body, concentrating it at the lower density end. So you basically just did from water to liquid to gas. Right? That's what you just did. You transformed it from solid, liquid, 
to gas. That's why it's longevity, because it's dealing with gas. <laughs> All right? Just like it does in the car. All right? This is the cycle it cheat. This is what I was talking about with hey, the nostril getting stuffed up. There's 12 meridians that are um, symmetrical on the right and left side of the body. So you have six on the right side, six on the left on the left side. When one is affected by a blockage, they all could ultimately be damaged. All right? Qi begins its flow in the lungs, then travels to the large intestines, and from there it goes to the stomach, then to the spleen, Next, it travels to the heart, then to the small meridian, excuse me, intestines. Next, it goes to the urinary bladder and the kidneys. After this, this, it leads towards the pericardium and the um, sangion, known as the triple burner. Finally, it goes to the gallbladder, then to the liver, then it goes back to the lungs where it starts its circular journey again. Assuming your chi is flowing in the normal way and that you have no blockages, it travels through each of your organs at a specific time of day. And look how it breaks up into two intervals, just like the nose. Um, one nose or uh, one nostril stays um, stay, uh, clogged up about an hour and 50 minutes, which two hours. The lungs are operating from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Large intestines, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Stomach, 7 a.m. to 9, p, um, 9 a.m. Spleen, 7 a.m. 9 a.m. to 11 p, um, a.m. Heart, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Small intestines, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Your nervy bladder, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Kidneys, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, pericardium, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Triple warmer, a burner, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Gallbladder, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Liver, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. So if you wake up during these time periods, if you take a nap, or if you wake up, you know, from resting all night, what happens is that there might be an issue going on. So if you wake up, practice the alternating nostril breath technique that we showed before. So the ratio is 4, 16, 8, 4. I have the nostril. You hold it for 16. Then you breathe out for 8 through the opposite nostril. All right? And this helps re uh, remove blockages in which that could happen. So you have to pay attention to the times in which that um, you're feeling something strange in your body and then correlate it to the chart, to this chart. And you would see exactly what's going on or wrong in the body, and you could correct it by simply breathing properly. All right? Hey, we did this one looking at the sun to expel toxins. You can visualize the sun at the eye level. You can sit straight with your back or straight on a chair. You can lean your head slightly back. 
Inhale through your nose and envision the sun rays entering into the body, circulating down the front of the spine and wrapping around the front of the body or via the tip of the spine. Exhale and envision the energy moving up the front of the body, spewing out the mouth in a filthy black smoke, in the form of a filthy black smoke. It, it, this is where they took um, the science of Long Green Mile from. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, we're just going to do six of these instead of 12 to 24. Okay. Okay. Now, you can also do it with the hot sound. So it can be in. You can place your hands in the navel. And just relax for a moment or two.
Okay. Now this one is the Peruvian technique. And you're going to take your left hand and place it at the base of your spine, which is where the Kundalini resides at. You're going to coerce the Kundalini, the mother principle, to come out of her cave, as they would say, up along the seven caverns, which are the chakras, to reach the top of the head. All right? So you can stand back up for this. go right here on the spine at the base, left hand. I'm going to follow the chart. All right. You can put it over the bladder. That would be urinary. That would be for the bladder, urinary, as well as those for the women, the ovaries. You will leave your hand here for about a minute. Normally, it would be three to five minutes. This is the self-healing technique. Clear the blockages within your chakras and to align them. And you're doing it manually. <laughs> right over the abdomen. Ideally, three to five minutes or more is where you would want to keep your hand at. We're just going to do one minute here. Deliver. On the solar plexus. Over the heart.
over the throat. Over the third eye. And over the crown, top of the head. You should be warming up by now. Okay. What did everybody feel with that? When I, when I touch the top of the crown at the end, my uh, feet start pulsating. All right. That's because we did exercise previously with opening and activating the soul chakras or your foot chakras. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyone else? What about you, Trina? <laughs> <laughs> Eyes are watering again. I hate to keep being having the biggest mouth, but my nose is draining. And my eyes are watering. That's up. good. <laughs> right. You're getting rid of toxins. Get okay. rid of toxins. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what happens when you do Qigong. What about you, brother? Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, I, I feel all right. Not, not really as much as I felt from the other ones, but I feel something. Okay. Oh, you going to keep working at it? I promise. You'll feel your body heat up and everything. Keep working at it. Right, this is called the Peruvian Peruvian healing technique. 
right? This is an um, ancient healing American technique right here called a Peruvian healing technique. Uh, Dr. Right. Um, yes. And do you send a video recording? The next yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, cool. Yeah. Yep, you'll get it before you can practice again. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, are there any questions before we go? Okay, so after, uh-huh. after I um, after my eyes watered and my nose are draining, now I'm heating up. So did something get removed? Did a blockage come out or something like that? Because now I feel like I'm warming up. Your Kundalini is moving through the chakras. Your Kundalini is moving through the chakras. So okay. when it moves through the chakras, it, it removes blockages. All right? And the reason why your nose is draining because you had your hand right here at the forehead, which is also part of the sinus area. But that's going to make your nose and the eyes water because you have your hand right here. You just brought the Kundalini to this region, which is the third eye region, but it also is going to affect the two physical eyes as well as also the sinus area or chambers up, um, or the, um, and also the five chambers in the brain. Yeah, I failed to do that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Yep. Uh, Liam, I was wondering, if I'm trying to have lucid dreams, what should I do? That exercise right there. And bring your hand, um, as you bring your right hand up towards your um, head, you would begin to start having more lucid dreams. And uh, that's how you create your life pretty much, right? Right. Exactly. That's exactly how you create your life because what happens on the astral plane is just like rain when it falls. And basically what that means is that whatever happens on the astral plane and whatever that you do there is what affects you here because it soon manifests. So it's just like, as they say, what goes up must come down. So whenever you are up into the astral plane, whatever happens also comes down to this earthly plane. So this is why lucid dreams are important because you can control your dreams. That means you can control um, this this so-called way of life, this arena here in which that we refer to as life, right? And also affirmations also help with that process. Prayers, decrees, those type of things help. Mantras, um, haku, um, you know, anything with that you can set positive in your mind as the as you move the energy up towards the head. Once you get your hand here at the top of the head and you have that positive thought in mind, that's what is going to manifest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also like I also felt like my brain was like scanning itself like when I was right. sleeping one time, and my pineal right. gland was standing up. What what is that scanning? What does that scanning mean? Um, that is your pineal gland um coming online, being activated, and basically um there's blood that's circulating in your body in which that has engulfed it, so it has caused it to swell. And the pineal gland, when it swells, does that. It, it, it does what is called projection or, 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 or scanning, as we would say. But that's simply um, a way of showing that is that that your that you have come back online. Your pineal gland is online. All right, yeah, because it did that one time, but I, I've I've never been able to do it again. I've been trying hard and trying to do all type of stuff, but. It only happened one time. Right. Well, the tone in which that helps, that is the E, the I sound. I, the I sound, or the E, the E sound. All right? So 
doing those sounds helps activate the pineal gland area. Also, another sound is tho, T-H-O-H. If you want to decalcify the pineal gland, is the tho sound. Tho. So those particular tones, just like when you was a kid, they would put their headphones on your ears in order to find out um, which ear. They would go back and forth with the sound in the ears to find out how well you were able to hear. All right? Mm -hmm. And you would tell them, left ear, boom, right ear, and they'll change the frequencies and all of, the, all of those change of frequencies and tones is actually the sounds in which that you make in which that illuminates the um, caverns or the basic areas in the brain. The pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, thalamus gland, the temporal lobes, the um, amygdala glands, the frontal lobe, neocortex, etc., etc. All of that is activated by sound. Your whole body is, um, is sound incarnated. Memories, light, sound. All right, what they call ether is incarnated. That's what you are. You are a living, walking thought form, um, essentially. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, I got a million questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, uh, mm -hmm. I got another question. So when, when you re receive enlightenment, like, what does that feel like? How do you know that you're enlightened? Um, you'll see the white light just like you did. That's one of the signs of which that the um right, the ancient speaks of is seeing um a white light. Sometimes it's a um pen size um with your eyes closed and you're still able to see this white light. Um, you know, so that's that's how you know. Definitely. And mm -hmm. uh if you're trying to access the Akashic records, what should you do? Tap at the back of the head 25 times, three times a day, right under the ball of the head. So the little ball is right here. So right under it, you tap on both sides where the spine comes up into the skull. That is the medulla on the dotted. What you want to do is scarify it. You want to scar it. So you tap 25 times, three times a day, and what that ha what happens is that you develop a photographic memory, and also you gain access to the Akashic records and have exposure to your past lives. All right. Okay. All right. And this is the last question. Right. Uh, when when mm -hmm. you're going into meditation and, and you're doing things, what what are you striving for? Perfection. But what does that to you? Perfection. Like, what Whatever does that you mean to you? Oh, not Whatever me. You, I, have like, you personally. Oh, um, 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 healing, um, treating people correctly, you know, in everyday life, um, treat myself properly, you know, um, focusing on um, solving problems in the everyday world, you know, uh, people who are hurting, giving them suggestions or recommendations on how they can heal themselves. Basically, I'm opening myself up to the ancestors and to the angelic forces, the avatars, you know, or divine or supreme beings so that I can become a living, walking vessel, you know what I'm saying, of my highest self and also to communicate with them in regards to the problems that takes place on this physical plane so that we can begin to start having some solutions. That's what I do. So that's my purpose in meditation. Okay. Any other questions before we go? All right, if not, we're gonna see everybody 
um, Sunday. Um, let me see. I'm getting ready to leave back out, go down to Miami, and then leave to go to the Bahamas, lecture there, and then come back and lecture two days in Miami. So um, I keep everybody posted as far as us in class um, this coming Sunday. All right, to make sure. Go ahead. <laughs> you had a question, Trina? No, I was just saying I was making a mental note in my head this time, so I didn't forget about it. Oh, well, well, I mean, don't don't walk, don't don't count me out yet, but just in case, um, you know, if I'm lecturing Sunday, because I because Sunday I'll be in the Bahamas. I'm leaving to go to Miami tomorrow. So then I'll be in the Bahamas for a week, and Lovely. but I'll be lecturing. Yeah, I'll be lecturing for three days. It's a three-day um, event. So and we and the reason why I'll be going, be going, even though I'm only lecturing during the three days, there's four other days that we're going to be working, putting together a universal um, African curriculum for. Um, children from K through 12 around the world, a curriculum in which that we all can utilize. So that's why I'm going down there. So it's going to be myself, my wife, and other doctors throughout the world and, you know, other, you know, leaders or whatever you want to call them from throughout the world. And we are going to come there and put our heads together, a think tank and put our heads together in order to find a solution. Um, as far as the way in which that we should um, teach our children as compared to the way that they have been taught globally. Because, of course, we know that they've been taught white supremacy, you know, and that's what they've been indoctrinated with. You know, they have no idea of the information, you know, that I teach, you know, and how far our history goes back, you know. So it's just a way of trying to put on this is other puzzle together, you know, so that's what we're going to be doing. So even though um, I'm mean, going to enjoy this sun, we're going to be working hard trying to get this done, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, can you describe what, what happened when, you, uh, when your cousin, when you, when you saw your cousin meet the ancestors? Oh, yeah, what happened was is that um, a spirit. My ancestral spirit came to me and took me out my body. So I actually was astral traveling and took me to a place where my cousin was, which I didn't see my cousin at first. I only seen people who dressed in garb and they were standing like in the line, like the Soul Train line from Soul Train. <laughs> and all of a sudden I looked towards my right and here he is coming down the aisle but he was looking real scary, you know, like he didn't know what the hell was going on, which he didn't because what the spirit allowed me to see was that he was being moved to from being a dead relative to a living ancestor. He was a dead relative, all right, before I put him on my altar because he was robbing and stealing and shit into people's houses, and matter of fact, that's how, according to my mom, that's how he got killed, you know what I'm saying? But he was my favorite cousin, you know, when he was coming out, you know? He's my first cousin, you know? So he was like my, you know, like a brother to me. You know, even though I was the oldest of, of um, all my cousins, you know, they was like a year, you know, younger or, you know, a few months younger. It wasn't like there was a big difference. We, you know, we was always close. So when my mom told me that he got killed, I put his picture on my altar. And because I went to my altar every day and I poured libations and I said my prayers, boom, the ancestors allowed for me to see him graduate from a dead ancestral, well, a dead relative state to a living ancestral state. So the ancestors, as he was coming up to Al, instead of, you know, dancing like they do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so instead of dancing, they was damn clapping and yelling and, you know, and screaming and like, yes. And just just going to town, and as he was walking up, he had his garb in his hands, right? And it looked like you know everybody was dressed like in African cultural native garb, 
and as he was coming up, you know what I'm saying, um, um, he had his garb in his hands, you know, but he was looking real timid, and, you know, was, you know, like he didn't know what was going on. And I started screaming. I was like, yo, tell him, And the spirit said, he can't hear you. And so I was thinking, my mind, what the hell bring me here for that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't like that. I, I did not like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, you know, I, I'm i glad that you let me see this, but damn, I want to talk to the nigga. <laughs> you know, but and he can't hear you. So, boom. Next thing I know, I was back in my body, and I woke up, and I was like, I right, I need to write this down. You know, but... You know, I mean, that's how you know the ancestors are with you, you know, because they help you and do those types of things. You know, I was upset about this shit. You know, they, they you know, I should have, like, did a body number to say, I should have cussed them out. Nah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an honor, you know what I'm saying, to see my cousin, you know, graduate. So I appreciate that they allowed for me to see that, you know, being that I did put effort into him graduating. Because, like I said, most of the time when you put – um, in African culture, like if you go through the Ifa, the Khan, as they say, or the Yoruba, or Palo Mayambe, or the various Palos, um, they'll say don't put people who are pedophiles or, or um, you know, or as they say, child molesters or whatever, or um, drunks or, you know, drug users or whatever. People who did a lot of negative things, don't put them on your altar. You know what I'm saying? But I knew Tim's heart. You know what I'm saying? I knew his heart. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that he wasn't a bad dude. He was in a desperate-ass situation. You know what I'm saying? So the ancestors allowed for me to see it, and I was thankful. Any other questions before we go? All right, if not, I'm going to say peace to everyone. Peace, peace, peace. 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 <laughs>